few weeks ago, Reddit user Ineffect posted this image to the Space Forum. It shows a lighthouse casting a beam of light outwards into a dark, clear and moonless night sky. The image generated a lot of interest. It was taken with relatively modest equipment, and yet it shows an extraordinary amount of detail and perspective. To create this image, in effect, stitched together 58 separate long exposure images, each 13 seconds long. The end result is a 150 megapixel portrait of our neighboring cosmos. With Ineffect's permission, I'm going to take you through some of the features of the night sky that we can see in just this single image. But first, some context. This photo was taken in March 2016 from Gilderton in Western Australia. That means it was taken in the Southern Hemisphere and so gives us a view of the sky that 90% of people might find unfamiliar. Here is a map of the world, and the yellow area is the southern hemisphere below the equator. Australia is here in the corner, and Gilderton is a town about 100 kilometres north of Perth in Western Australia, so it's located somewhere around here. In this picture, we are facing almost directly south, so that means east is towards the left and west is towards the right of the picture. Now it's important to mention that because this is a composite image of 58 separate photos, it shows a much wider field of view than an ordinary photo. In fact, this image shows about 200 degrees. That means that by looking on the left here, we're looking almost directly towards the east. South is in the middle, and west is almost directly towards the right. And it also means that this region up here is roughly directly overhead. So the wide angle warps our perspective. This concentrated band of stars that we can see, which is our best view along the Milky Way, appears to be curved like a rainbow. In reality, it would actually look straight, as you can see in this image here. So this section from here to here, in this straight, unwarped image, is the equivalent of our picture from here to here. And you can see that it curves due to the wide-angle nature. You'll have to ignore the technical wizardry that allows the lighthouse here and its beam of light here to look unaffected. The first thing you might notice in this picture, something even more eye-catching than the lighthouse itself, is this bright band of light that arcs across the image here. This is our best view along the Milky Way galaxy, our own galaxy. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy filled with hundreds of billions of stars. It is about 100,000 light years in diameter. So that means light, which travels at around 300,000 kilometers every second, would take about 100,000 years to travel from one end of the Milky Way to the other. Our Sun is a star within this galaxy, and it is about 26,000 light years from the center. If this were the Milky Way, and obviously it's not, then our Sun would be perhaps somewhere around here. This rich band of stars, which in fact forms a straight line across our night sky, is our view along the plane of our spiral galaxy, and so is densely populated with stars, dust, plasma, gas, and other galactic matter. Having said that, almost every point of light in this picture, including those located away from this band, is a star within our Milky Way. There aren't too many objects we can see with the naked eye that are outside of our galaxy, but there are some. One of my favorite things to point out in the night sky 
is this region of the Milky Way here. You can see a slight bulge that appears to glow more intensely than the rest of the sky. This here is the center of our galaxy. At the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole. It is around this black hole that all of the stars in the sky revolve, including our sun. Our sun take about 240 million years to complete just one lap around the black hole. So if this is the center of our galaxy, why isn't it much, much brighter? Why does it appear to be obscured from view? As you look across the bright band of the Milky Way, you can notice dark patches. This dark patch here is called the Great Rift. You can also see dark patches throughout here, across this region, and around here. These dark patches are colossal dust clouds floating through the Milky Way. These clouds of plasma and molecular dust do not emit light themselves, and moreover, they block our view of the stars behind them. One way to illustrate this is to compare these interstellar clouds to more familiar terrestrial ones. Here you can see that the sun is obscured by rain clouds, creating a dark band across the sky. The Great Rift is similar. Here we have the center of our galaxy, which is analogous to the sun, covered by dark clouds. This cloud in particular is about 300 light years away from us. So the stars that we can see in front of the cloud are closer to us than 300 light years. One of the defining features in the southern sky is the constellation Crux, which is here, better known as the Southern Cross. It features prominently on the Australian flag, as well as other Southern Hemisphere nations, such as New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and even Brazil. Here we have Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta Crucis, which form a kite-shaped cross. Epsilon is the faint star here, which completes the distinctive shape. Gamma Crucis up the top is only 88 light years away and is the closest red giant to our sun. It is about 100 times bigger than the sun. The Southern Cross is often used for navigation. If you take the distance from Gamma to Alpha Crucis and you multiply that by three and a half times, you get to what is approximately the South Celestial Pole, the point around which all of the stars appear to turn. If you drop a line directly to Earth from the South Celestial Pole, you're pointing south. The Southern Cross contains some of the brightest stars in the southern night sky, and is visible even in poor viewing conditions, and so it's a useful landmark to find other features. One recognisable feature right near the Southern Cross is this black patch here. This is called the Colsac Nebula. The Colsac Nebula is a dark nebula, being a cloud of interstellar dust. It is one of the most prominent features in Australian Aboriginal astronomy folklore, because it forms the head of a dark constellation called the Emu in the Sky. The emu traces the dark nebulae along the Milky Way, with the body formed by the Great Rift. The Southern Cross is also right next to the Jewel Box Cluster, which is visible as a hazy patch near Beta Crucis, which is also called Mimosa. This cluster of stars is about 6,500 light years away. To find the Southern Cross, some people rely on these two bright pointer stars called Alpha and Beta Centauri. These stars lead almost directly to the top of the Southern Cross. 
This star in particular, Alpha Centauri, also known as Regal Kent, is famous for being the closest star system to us, at only four light years away. The reason I say star system and not star is because Alpha Centauri is actually made up two stars, each about the same size as the Sun. They are so close together that they can't be resolved by the naked eye and appear as one star. There is actually a third star in this system called Proxima Centauri, which is a small red dwarf star located somewhere here and is too faint to be seen. Proxima Centauri holds the distinction of being the closest star to the Sun. In the context of the universe, four light years is just a stone's throw away. But let's say you took the Sun, which is easily over a million kilometers in diameter, and almost 150 million kilometers away from us, and you shrunk it down to the size of a grain of sand only half a millimeter across. On this scale, the Earth would be a microscopic fleck about 5 centimetres away from the grain. Neptune would be a speck a little bit further than 1.5 metres away. And Proxima Centauri, our nearest stellar neighbour, would be another grain of sand 15 kilometres away. In between those two grains of sand, separated by 15 kilometres, is almost completely empty space. Earlier, I mentioned that there were some objects in this image that are outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. The most prominent of these is this wispy puff here called the Large Magellanic Cloud. The Large Magellanic Cloud is a dwarf galaxy that orbits our Milky Way. At 160,000 light years away, it's the third closest galaxy to us and is the closest one visible to the naked eye. Still, the fact that there were galaxies other than the Milky Way, or island universes as Immanuel Kant theorised, was only settled about 100 years ago. The Large Magellanic Cloud is home to billions of other stars, all so far away and concentrated that they appear just a hazy patch of light in the night sky. The Large Magellanic Cloud is also home to the Tarantula Nebula. The Tarantula Nebula is so luminous that if it were as close to us as the Orion Nebula in the Orion constellation, then its light would cast shadows at night. The Large Magellanic Cloud's smaller and more distant sibling is the Small Magellanic Cloud, which is located here there is actually a bridge of gas that connects these two galaxies and that's called the Magellanic Bridge. Although these galaxies have been known about since ancient times, the Magellanic Clouds are named after Ferdinand Magellan who recorded them during the first ever circumnavigation of the globe back in 1520. Here, just off to the side of the small Magellanic Cloud, is a globular cluster of stars called 47 Tucani. This cluster can be seen with the naked eye and contains millions of stars itself. Over towards the right, we have Carnopus, the second brightest star in the night sky behind Sirius and ahead of Alpha Centauri. Carnopus is about 300 light years away which is the same as the Great Rift over towards the left, here, and is much, much closer than the dwarf galaxies that look nearby. Carnopus is the launching point for the constellation Carina, which leads us back up past the Splinter Cluster and towards this very bright region of the Milky Way, towards which the lighthouse beam is pointing. This glowing region of the Milky Way is home to the Carina Nebula, which itself is home to many extraordinarily bright stars and nebulae. These include the well-known Eta Carinae, which is a supermassive star system 
that exploded in 1827. Now we're going to head over east, near the galactic centre, to find Antares, the heart of the constellation Scorpius. You can see with the naked eye that Antares is distinctly reddish. It is a red supergiant and is one of the largest and most luminous observable stars at almost 1,000 times larger than our Sun and 10,000 times brighter. But the reason why I've come across to Antares is to help us navigate up towards the scorpion's head and past its claws to this object You won't find this object here on any old night, because unlike the stars, this object is much closer to Earth, and as the days and months pass, it moves around the night sky against a relatively static backdrop of the much further away stars and galaxies. This object here is Mars, the red planet. Earth is the third closest planet to the Sun, and Mars is the fourth. In this image, it is about as far away from us as we are from the Sun. To give us a sense of scale and depth, the small Magellanic Cloud over here is about 200,000 light years away, and the centre of our galaxy, obscured by the Great Rift, is about 26,000 light years away. Carnopus, 300 light years away, Gamma Crucis, over here, is the red giant 88 light years away, and Alpha Centauri is a star system that's about 4 light years away. In contrast, Mars, which is here, is a mere 8 light minutes away. Now, if we go back to Antares, and we turn towards the east, we find another planet within our solar system over here. This is one of the most spectacular objects an amateur astronomer, or any astronomer, can observe. This is the gas giant Saturn, with its trademark ring system made almost completely pure iced water. The last thing I want to point out is a bit of a mystery to me. It's this extremely bright point above the Southern Cross pointers. This object appears far brighter than Carnopus, which ought to be the brightest object in this image. My guess is that it could be Menkent, also known as Theta Centauri. If anyone out there has a better idea, please feel free to enlighten me. So there we have it. One image which shows half the night sky at one point in time from one place on Earth, here in the Southern Hemisphere. In this image, we have our own galaxy, we have our neighbouring dwarf galaxies, we have bright and dark nebulae, stars and planets. I focused on things that we can see and identify with the naked eye. With a decent telescope, you can start to split binary star systems, explore nebulae and star clusters, and make out whole other galaxies. However, even in this region, this huge region that we can explore with our eyes, even this is only a tiny fraction of our observable universe. Our Milky Way, and the hundreds of billions of stars and planets within it, is just one of hundreds of billions of other galaxies, each with hundreds of billions, and in some cases trillions, of their own stars and planets. This image gives us just a fleeting look at a tiny bubble of space floating in an inconceivably large universe. So thanks again to Reddit user InEffect for this extraordinary look at our own neighbouring